two different styles here, um, which is important to note. So, what pressure do we inflate our airbags to? Yeah, 118, 120. And so this is where it might confuse you guys, but the squads and truck 17 have these airbags. You can see they look just a little bit different. And these are 150 pounds. So for you guys, just set that at 118, 120, and you're good. It's not gonna make this thing not work. It's just, it's not gonna use its full rated capacity, but it'll still be good. Because if you overpressurize these bags, you can worry about it uh, well. So whenever possible, we wanna protect the bottom side of the bag. That's why we have this wood. But you don't ever want to put I shouldn't say you don't ever want to because as soon as I say that you'll go tonight and have to do it. But as a rule, you generally do not want to put anything hard on top of your airbags. And I know that kind of goes against a lot of what a lot of us were taught. Um, but there's at least two case studies I know of. Uh, one guy in Pennsylvania and another guy in Toronto where they were inflating the bags, a piece of wood kicked out, hit the guy in the neck because he was kneeling right next to him, monitoring the lift, hit the guy in the neck and killed him before he hit the ground. So since that can pop out, we don't want to put anything hard over top of the bags. The reason that came about was when airbags first were introduced, it was literally just a rubber, a rubber bag. So there's nothing to protect it. These bags have steel and Kevlar belting on the inside of them to give them some more puncture resistance than rather than just the rubber. So again, generally try not to put anything hard up on top of the bags so it doesn't kick out. So this bag here is rated for 32 tons and this one's rated for 19 tons. This car doesn't weigh anywhere close to that, right? So it's gonna be perfectly fine. Now, the way that they calculate how much these bags can lift is they find the surface area. So the length times the width, and they multiply that by 118, which is the pressure, PSI, right? So you figure out the number of square inches, multiply that by 118, that's how they get 32 tons. But you only have that 32 ton lift capacity. So let's say you, uh, there's some of those steel joints and stuff around hill and door right over in your guys' district. And a roll of steel or an I beam falls off and is on top of a car or a pedestrian. You gotta lift it off and it's still, it's still viable. You're only gonna get the rated capacity of the lift for two inches. Because as you keep inflating that bag, it balloons out into that football shape. So you have less surface area contacting your load. So that's why it decreases the amount that you can lift. Jake, is that a set thing? Like can you tell for every inch I inflate it? Decreases by this much. Not, not that I know of. I don't know. There might be some kind of formula out there. Or something. Yeah, for what you do, you have to sit there and do the math. Like, figure out now I'm in place and now I only have. You can see you down there with the tape measure. Well, and, and the best thing, the best thing you can do is just use the biggest bag that'll fit. The, the, for whatever your scenario is. Always go big or go home. Try to find the biggest bag because then you're going to get the greatest lift out of it. And at some point, it's going to balloon out and you'll be like, all right, yeah, let's let's stop this. Um, but. So right now, if we were to slide that airbag and that piece of plywood underneath, we could probably lift it up enough to get this guy off, or not to get this guy off, but to get the car off the guy. Um, but as a general rule, you wanna to try to crib up that airbag to whatever it is that you're lifting. So we take some four by fours and we build a solid base below it just to get that height. Because again, as you inflate the bag, you lose capacity, um, which again, in this is, biggest deal but always try to have some plywood underneath the bag but you might only have an inch or inch and a half of space to throw that airbag in so you might not be able to put anything underneath that. Uh, the big thing to remember is crib as you lift uh, they say lift an inch crib an inch so always have people there with step chocks or some cribbing ready to throw it in so if the airbag fails if something shifts or moves the cribbing will catch it and you won't squash it again. so people have asked about using the spreaders to lift a car if it's on somebody that is an option it wouldn't be my first option because while it's quick, it's not good. Uh, New York City, they killed a guy. They had a, a guy on a moped get run over by a Ford Taurus. He's laying face down right in front of the rear tires. He's got a helmet on and there's pedestrians there with uh, cell phone footage and they're talking to the guy. The guy's, the guy's alive. They get there, they come to try to lift the car up with the spreaders. As they're lifting it up, the spreaders twist out. The car comes down and kills the guy. So that could be you. Not to say that you'll never use that because that might be what you have to do for the situation at hand, but airbags are far better option. Even a, a, um, 
we can lift, we can stack as many as two bags together. You're always going to put the smaller bag on top of the bottom bag and always inflate the bottom bag first and then inflate the top one. So generally what I do is I would inflate the top bag if I'm trying to get a lot of lift. I'd inflate the top bag to what I would guess maybe is about 75% of how big it can go. And then I'll start inflating that top one and it'll kind of lock them together because there's still enough flexibility. Because if you over pressurize that bottom bag, it's rock solid. So as you pressurize that top one, now it's, it's a little bit more unstable. So if you can kind of chase them like that, it generally works a little bit better. Um, setting these things up, if you're gonna stack them, you can just, these X's are the middle, you can stack them like this. So what we see a lot of people do is they'll have the fittings on the same side. It works that way, but it's a whole lot easier to keep track of your hoses if you put them to opposite sides and then run those back. So you guys have, what, red, yellow, blue, and orange. The squads have like a, a black hose, uh, a red hose, and a blue hose, or a yellow hose. And so, what I would suggest is, for you guys it doesn't really matter, but for the squads, we always say to put that black hose between the regulator, or between the regulator on the bottle and the airbag controller. Because in the middle of the night, it's a whole lot easier to say up on yellow or up on blue rather than up on black, and you're trying to trace and figure out which one the black one goes to. Um, so at this point, we'd slide these underneath. You want to try to get as much of the airbag underneath whatever it is that you're lifting as possible. Um, and then crib up as you go. And that's about it. So let's say, like I said, we want to build a solid base for these uh, these airbags to rest on. So you get enough 4x4s to cover the whole base of it and lift it up. But let's say we have to lift something. Maybe this guy, there's a car underneath the semi truck, for example. We need to lift that semi up just a little bit so we can pull the car out. We're going to need to build cribbing up pretty high, right? So in that case, you're going to need a lot of cribbing but you're going to want to build a box crib. So believe it or not, just this wood from Home Depot is pretty damn strong. What um, the capacity of this setup right here is 24,000 pounds. And you can build this up to twice the height of the piece of cribbing that you have. So really, we could build a box crib up this high and it'd still be stable. So we build our box crib up and you'll notice that some of these pieces have lines on them and that's so you have an overlap. On each, um, on each piece of cribbing because if you put them right at the corners like that as you load it, it has a tendency to kick out. So this way if it's a heavy load like we're lifting up a, uh, a semi truck this would allow the wood to kind of crush together. You might have to throw it out depending on how heavy it is it might deform the wood enough but this is going to lock those pieces together so it doesn't kick out. So we build it up like this. That's our we need to get it up this high and then we're going to lift. So always make your top layer solid. Whatever layer is going to be up against your airbags should always be a solid layer. Now we can put our airbags on top of this and lift up from there. So the important things to remember on the cribbing are always overlap all the edges about three or four inches and um, always have a solid layer for your airbags. So I guess without further ado we can get this car off this guy. Any questions? Oh. Do you guys have um, do you guys have the shutoff valves for your airbags? Shut off valves? No. Probably not. Oh. <laughs> Winston, can you go to the other oh. So if we're going to put it on the bag, you'll see all these Paratec hoses have this little threaded collar on here to prevent these from coming apart. So it's like a normal air fitting where it just pushes on, you'll give it a quick tug and it'll lock, but screw this collar down to prevent these from popping off under pressure. And then so now we can shut this valve, this bag's inflated, we can shut that valve, disconnect the hose, and now go lift another airbag. So it'll hold that pressure in there, but also if we start to overload this, this is a relief valve here that'll just, kind of like on an engine, it'll just vent that excess pressure so we don't explode the bag and hurt something. So these are good to use, but it might not be on the bag. It might be better off to put it on the controller to where if you're sliding this under a roll of steel or something, you should never put your hand or anything between the load and the ground. So if you're trying to push these things in as far as you can, use a shovel, use a pike pole or something, but you're not going to be able to shut this thing off if it's halfway underneath this roll of steel. So then you can just put it 
on the controller side, so like you guys have, to where you just have to disconnect it here and then use another hose. So it still serves the same purpose, it still is a relief valve, but it prevents you from having to put yourself underneath the load, whatever it is. Um, so, let's see the worst. You guys, yours is nice labeled here on and off as far as this valve. So a lot of times people pressurize these and they can't figure out why they can't get pressure to the controller. On this style, and it's again, it's labeled, as long as this knob is in line with this outlet, you're good to go. Same thing on this style, red is off, green is on, you're good to go. Um, as a habit, try to always uh, screw out these regulators before you store them. Because once you pressurize it, if you pressurize it and there's tension on this spring in the regulator, it can screw the regulator up and then you might be screwed. You might not be able to lift the vehicle. So I think that's everything I got as far as airbags go. Um, you guys have a 30 minute bottle in your kit. That's perfectly fine. You don't have to use an hour bottle. The last time that we uh, the, that we did it, like I said, on 475, we used one 30 minute bottle and it was plenty. There's way more air in there than you really think. So if you have an hour bottle, great. But if you don't, don't necessarily go around hunting for one just to run your airbags. But uh, with that, what we can do is, we'll do this a couple times so everybody can get a chance to do it. But basically, we'll slide the airbags in. You can put cribbing beneath it if you think you need to. We'll lift it up, pull them out, shove them back underneath there, and we'll do it again. But while we're lifting on one side, we want to crib also maybe on the other side of the Depending on how heavy this load was, again, going back to that roll of steel, a roll of steel typically weighs 40 to 60,000 pounds. So in that case, we're probably going to have to have two sets of airbags lifted. So you might have one on this side, one on this side. And we can get as complicated or as serious with airbags as you want to get as far as controlling two at once and different things. But just realize that if you think you're going to need more airbags, it's a car underneath a semi truck or something, make sure. Ideally, you should have a truck and a squad both with airbags there. You can call for the other squad, you can call for another truck, or if it's if it's going to be serious, like something like a semi-truck, and we're going to talk about this with 15s on the struts, call for 6s for the USAR rig. They have like 20 airbags and a whole bunch of heavier duty struts that are used for building collapse, but are also useful for a cement truck, a dump truck, something like that. So if you think it's going to be a complicated lift, like again, that steel rule, I'd probably try to get them at least coming. Um, just so you have more bags to use in the event um, that some, A, something happens to yours, or B, you just don't have enough to lift it off. So, we'll put this stuff back. Um, you need to be specific when you make that request. Yeah. Don't yeah. just ask for sixes because you're probably going to get just sixes. Yeah, call for the USAR rig. Yeah. So, we will put all this back together. Let's use, uh, let's use four bags. You guys already got yours out. And uh, we'll go from there. So. Somebody, like I said, is going to run the airbags. Um, typically, you'll have one person on the controller. And uh, in every class I've ever gone to, they always say that the officer should be the one up here monitoring the lift. So the officer will kind of be here. But you want to be out of the way so if a hose fails or if a bag kicks out, you're not going to get kicked in the face with it. So if this is our victim here, we might have guys putting some cribbing here. Might have our lift over there. And the officer probably somewhere in this area. So. A, he can tell the guy on the controller, hey, give me up on yellow, up on blue. And then once there's enough, that can just rip the guy out. And so as the person on the controller, it doesn't matter who's there. I don't care if the chief is there. The only person you're going to listen to if you're on that controller is that officer. Because there are so many ways that this could go wrong. And if somebody's like, hey, give it up a little more, give it up a little more. Nope. Talk to my officer. Because you're the one with eyes on the patient, with eyes on the lift, how it's progressing. So if, as the guy in the controller, that's the only person you'll listen to. All right? All right, enough of me talking. Let's, uh, let's do it. Yeah. And if you have enough people, you might be able to. <laughs> why didn't you, you say so? Yeah. Okay. That would be sure. Yeah. Right. Is that the 
I was on like before we were the only ones in the house and we come running up with the bus and just keep it right in between for some ungodly reason. Yeah. And it tipped over. Is it just a truck driver? Right on the corner. Yeah, you got it. Oh, there's a dump truck. Oh, was on his way. Start setting up the curving. From this stuff to you guys. I don't I'm patient really. I'm one patient. Like, hey, 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 might want to spread that stuff out just a little bit so you don't get a, a big kinked up mess. You can ask somebody to help you kind of move move things back, get things organized, keep it straight. Which, which, slide. which uh, big? Do you want the big or the small on this yeah, side? The big bag on this side. Okay. We slide it. We slide it here on that side. So as we go up, the suspension may drop. Yeah, you're looking for as much frame as you can find. I guess as good as you're going to get it, but you got a good placement. Whenever I do that, snap that thing on and give it a yank. Make sure that that doesn't come undone on you. Just like that, perfect. Uh, Negrin, screw that collar down, like I was showing. Oh. Perfect. Yeah, because there's nothing solid on these so we can be the yeah, ideally before you slide it underneath, but but it's like anything, you can do a quick safety check, click it on there and be good. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it, for something with a uh, like a car, absolutely. Now, step shocks really don't have a whole lot of capacity for anything heavier, but for a car, yeah, you can just slide the step shock. Yeah, as you're raising it, just slip it. I, I like that better. Yep. Hey, uh, kind of like a dive master to dive. I got it all set up, but nobody does anything until you double check. Okay. Double check and make sure you got it the way you want it, then we can proceed. fits and then as it keeps lifting up slide the big one in next to it so that way if it falls you're gonna catch it and you don't have to build that box grip or you got step box right there so, so I could use this big one and as it goes up I could throw that yep, yep. absolutely I mean on top just slide it mm -hmm. okay. well you could put the set chalk on top but you're not gonna have to lift it that high like this yeah okay. but would you this six by six will probably be enough to okay, rate that person out. You're only trying to get a body out. Yeah, yeah. we just have to get. <laughs> <turn. laughs> so, uh, Slide, you good on that rear tire? Uh, just, just, just the rear side. Yep. So I'd have one person on this cribbing, one person on this cribbing, yes, sir. you right here, and then when you start lifting it, you tell them you want it shoved in. I would crib it right to where it's at right now so that when I lift it this side, it's kind of like a fulcrum. It'll push on that side and it'll just lift this side and then that side will stay exactly where it's at. All we need is three inches. So I wouldn't I wouldn't actually need to be adding a bunch of cribbing on that side. No, you should be lifting this side and it'll push the pressure on that side. 
Yep. Just so it's not sinking lower over there. It's yep. Really smashing. Yep. You got the controller. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, I'm fine that, with that. Or are you risking that spitting out? No, um, generally they say you don't want to stack two things up in the same direction, but the one time you can is with a step chalk when you're just trying to catch a, catch a little. Right. Now obviously that's all rusted out, so it, it might not it might not really do a whole lot for us as we lift. Or could you do once you get back on like here I am in the beginning? Yep, and put it on top of there. Yeah, and sure. And then feed it in. Yep. Because I'm like you, I don't like sticking my hands. Right. Yep. Something. Yeah, it, always try not to put your hands underneath it. Yep. I like and, this stuff. and in a real quick lift, like if you got to get this person out right now, this is something to consider. But chances are you'll have enough lifts out of those bags. Okay. So we're just doing this so you guys get a little picture. Know what you might. I think the lieutenant's going to be there. The generator and everything else. Yeah. So I think he's going to be right there, front and center. Kind of telling us what to do, so I think he's probably just pulling the body out. What's left? Yeah, the beach is going to be on the body. And then you right in the middle, running the show. Jake, you ready? Yeah. Cheers, Aaron. <laughs> we got a pair of my chips, yo. All right. Up on yellow. Everybody watch the cribbing. All right. Yeah, keep going. Stop. Good on yellow. Stop. Ready? Yep. Go. Sweet. Okay. Uh, we lost some arm. <laughs> uh -oh. we, we got another one. All right. Everybody crib. Everybody good. Everybody safe. All right. Got the guy out. Put him on the backboard stretcher. Kind of successful. All right, so now to break down the airbag operation, you kind of do everything in reverse. And depending on what you had to do to get the stuff in there, like um, the incident that we had where the car was on top of the lady, but it was on grass, we ended up having to dig some of the dirt out so we could slide the bags underneath because the, the car was physically right up against the ground. So that might be something you have to do. But in this case, if we just deflate the airbag, the cars would be sitting on this cribbing right. and we're, we'll never get it out right. until the tow truck gets there. So what you can do is you can kind of back it out and maybe just rest it on the six by sixes, or you can pull everything out, lower the bag, because right now there's no risk. If we if the car falls, it's not falling on anybody. So you should be able to pull that cribbing out, deflate the bag, and lower the car back down to the ground. Okay. All right. Actually, on. hold on a second. Now that I said that, I'm forgetting that there's no tires on this side, and we had to use the spreaders to get the car up, I would leave the, the six by sixes underneath of it. So pull the step chalk off. We'll just rest this thing on the six by sixes and we'll take care of it. We'll get it later.